Hello, welcome to the Tea Time Show teaser. Of course, it's not actually going to be called the Tea Time Show. I don't know what it's going to be called. Um, and in fact, it'd be interesting to get your ideas on this. But welcome to the show. I'm back in the studio now. And if you were watching my previous vlog, uh, vlog I keep calling them blogs, but they're vlogs because they're video logs. Yeah, I get it. I, I, I'm very much old school. I'm very much the old way of doing things. And all this new technology, you'd think I would have embraced it, been doing this long enough. But it's funny, you know, those old ways of doing things stick in you. They're, they're stuck in you. And, and I am very old school. But hopefully that is what's going to make this new show that we're going to put together um, part of it, part of the old ways. So this is the Tea Time teaser. And I'm back in the studio in my per past vlog previous vlog you'll see that I've been faffing about with the studio we'll have a, a little comparison about that um, in a second but I want to change the whole set I want to change all this uh, around a little bit so there's a lot of work in progress but we're sort of getting there and I've been thinking about this for some time and hopefully it's going to be interesting so yeah so uh, let's have a quick look now I've <laughs> I've got here um, my studio that I used to do as the Vogue Show studio. And I want to record this show as if it's live. It won't be live, but we might do some live versions of it. So I want to be able to have everything at my fingertips. When I used to do my podcast of the Vogue Show years ago, I had three computers, I had three screens, one mouse, and I had a program that would operate... All three computers, these three screens, of course, there was no video. It was all audio and I'd have headphones on and all of this. And um, I was able to have one machine that would record the uh, podcast, which is actually what's happening now, recording the video in this case. One that would access the Internet so I could access stuff um, on whim and have news stories and uh, unusual things that happen or whatever. And one which was the had radio audio radio software on it and I could make phone calls and I could uh, play in music and jingles and that sort of stuff well I don't have all of that now but that sense of fun that sense of playing all of this live is what gave the show a sort of live feel even though it was actually pre-recorded as we went on we did actually have a webcam and people could watch the podcast being recorded this is going back to 2005 when i used to do this sort of stuff so this is a, a sort of a slightly different version of it but i now have to think about the visuals not so much the audio so i'm hoping that the audio and i'm hoping that this kind of tester is going to work the tea time show will be recorded probably about half past four, that's the intention, on I don't know how many days a week. It may be uh, two or three days a week. Uh, it may, once we get up and running and, and if it takes off and if people embrace it and they like it, it may be daily, you know, Monday to Friday. Who knows? We're still keeping all the other strands. We're still going to keep the walks as and when I can get out, but mostly probably next year in the spring. Um, we will certainly be doing more van life and camp outs on the channel. Um, and of course, the English couple will continue, particularly at the moment, during this you know, wintry, autumn, winter period when it's nice to be inside and what have you. And the stories, hopefully, I know not everybody likes the story, but a few people do and they've told me uh, that they enjoy it, which is great. So now I've got to get my head around all this technical stuff, um, which I will endeavour to do. So now um, the studio, you can see it's a little bit thinned out from what it was. Uh, do you remember what it used to look like? Here, here's a picture of what it looked like before, and it was very crammed. Admittedly, that is taken from uh, the behind the camera, um, and I uh, took some stuff off the shelf, and you can see them on the desk in front of you there. But, um, yeah, a bit cramped and lots of stuff. The, the old Union flag has now gone. We thinned out the shelves a little bit and all of that, and, and as you can see, it's it's very different. So that's what it was before. Slightly skew picture, I appreciate, and that's what it is now. Um, and that's that's nice. Um, but I want to change the set from all of this. I mean, for example, that's a Revox. Actually, somebody got in touch with me and said, "Would I be interested in selling my Revox?" And I was very tempted. And I do need to get rid of some stuff. And I might, you know, put stuff up 
that uh, I would like to sell and offer anybody who wants to buy it uh, through the show. You never know. Get rid of it. Um, but it, it's probably inappropriate because um, it's not an, a British or English made thing. And the show I want to keep, the Tea Time show, is about English, uh, England and Englishness and all things England and made in England and, and that sort of thing. Very loosely. There may be other bits and pieces in it. I'm not going to say it's only about English stuff, but I want to kind of have that as the main niche for the show, as the main overall theme, because uh, being English in this day and age is something that's being very much challenged, I feel, as if we're being pushed away. That, that it, you know, if, if we're going to be anything, it's British. Which, well, what does that mean? That is a bit more of a, a, a social construction, isn't it? It's, it's a number of countries all under one umbrella. Uh, but Scot Scottish people are definitely Scottish. Welsh people are definitely um, Welsh. I think English people should definitely be English and we should celebrate our customs and traditions, um, even though in the modern world that's, you know, a bit of a, a dodgy thing these days. It seems to be if you promote anything that's England, English, it's, uh, it's a bit of a no-no. But I am English. Why can I not be proud of being English? That's, I don't understand that. So I want to reflect that in the studio, in the background of the studio, in all of this, and actually... You know, things like the uh, neon sign there that says Vogue Show. And there's another one you can't quite see. It's on the... Oh, yeah, there it is. Let the ball... Hang on, get my finger in the right place. The Bald Explorer thing there. Um, yeah, that, that they'll probably all go and we'll do different coloured lightings. But I'd like to build up an English scene behind me. I think that would be much, much better and appropriate. It's not going to happen overnight. don't want to go out and buy, buy all that stuff. But um, if I come back and use my little program here... Uh, I have got some things that have been sent in. Very lovely. Um, the wonderful uh, Linda Kane uh, bought me th bought me this. It, it, do you know what it is? Any idea what that is? Uh, that is an old washboard, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, an old washboard. Let me fetch that, which is just down here. Here it is. Look, and um, you can wash your clothes. I'll be mentioning this a little bit later on in this uh, little teaser show. Um, Acme. It says British there. Uh, now, so I don't know whether it was made in England or in one of the other countries in Britain, but uh, fantastic thing. And it would be lovely to build up um, a scene here uh, with uh, English sort of things. So I can hopefully put that back in its position. We also have uh, Linda Kane got me a carpet beater. Actually, it's the sort of thing, you know. Unwanted, unwanted guests. You could beat them off like that. Mm, that hurts. I, I won't be doing much of that. So uh, now I've made a little list of uh, bits and pieces that I wanted to talk about in the, this little teaser show um, as I try and experiment and work it all out. It's all embryonic, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely. So, yeah, another thing that I want to do um, is to look at, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the English customs and things. And if I go to Google, here we go, or a browser and a search engine just happens to be uh, Google, and I put in English uh, traditions and things like that, uh, it's interesting how the old Union flag keeps coming up, even though I have actually put at the top here English traditions. It's almost as if being English is, uh, is not the thing. But look, there's lots of um, bits and pieces here which come up which I think will be interesting to explore and celebrate as much as one can um, within the show uh, because it, I, I want to keep it as a, a cultural show. There's um, Punch and Judy, for example. We've got all the, uh, the, the dancing, English dancing, lots of different types of English dancing, uh, English food and icons, you know, like the uh, telephone boxes and the English designs that, that happened, of course, um, which will be... Uh, interesting. The hunt, um, it's part of our culture. It's not something I support myself because I don't think fox hunting is a particularly good thing. However, it is part of our culture and our tradition and um, at, in its time it had its place. Um, and these are sort of, you know, your typical sort of images. Like, what does it say here? The perfect Brit should be. And of course, he's talking about Britain there. But look at this. Maypole dancing. Do kids still do a bit of maypole dancing? Do they ever get taught this in the schools? I would love to know if that is the case. Um, because I think they should do. 
I think that these traditions and our, we should be celebrating all of that. And if it's not taught in the schools, I hope to bring it into a a little nonsense show here. Just fun, fun and and games, which would be nice. So there we are. Um, Julia, of course, will be involved in all of this and she won't necessarily be around when we record the show, but in the elements that we record for the show and when she's available, she will be. So have not. I'm not uh, ushering her. She's very much going to be involved and will be included in the show. And she will bring in her own uh, unique talents and skills, not least in fashion. Together we want to explore English fashion uh, and what's right. I mean, I love wearing these waistcoats and Julia loves wearing her dresses and things like that. And of course, we've got uh, a fascination with um, nostalgia and um, historic outfits and costumes. And I know that Julia is going to be making up some Tudor type dresses and we're going to be following that. Um, and see how she gets cutting out the pattern and, and doing them. And, you know, being a beautiful young lady herself, it would be the wonderful thing. So there's all sorts of bits and bobs that we aim to do within the show. She's also interested in horses and things like that. And of course, to me, horses are fascinating because they were the engine house of uh, English farms. So um, there is so much to do um, with that sort of thing. Also... As you'll be aware, um, food, English food. And I've been um, putting together a sort of a more vintage, nostalgic look. It's not 100% accurate. Kitchen. So let's go down in the kitchen and have a look. Down in my kitchen, my sort of farmhouse kitchen here um, with the dreadful electric light, which I'd love to change and get um, a few more film lights in here so that we can film in here a little better. Oh, uh, and excuse all my uh, washing that happens to be on the line at the moment as I film here with my phone. Um, this is the great thing about the old English kitchen, you see, is that you've got your range. Here's my range, as you know, which is a lovely Essie iron heart. Beautiful thing. I love it a bit. Um, and down there, lots of um, kindling and wood ready to get it going for today. Uh, actually, that was chopped up last night <laughs> by the lovely Julia. Uh, God, God bless her, my eye is a bit stuck together this morning. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, yes, one of the things I think would be fantastic to explore in the Tea Time show, which whatever the name is, uh, is good old English food. And I've got various books on uh, these sort of things. So look at this, roast beef. Oh, who doesn't love a nice roast beef? Um, treacle tart, uh, Cornish pasties. Uh, roasted root vegetables, these old things, glazed turnips and green salads and baked rice pudding. Oh, you can't beat a lovely base, baked rice pudding. Here, have a look at that. There we go. So these are some of the things I think that we could experiment with. The lovely Julia and I could get into the kitchen, do a bit of cooking and what have you, and share our recipes and our experiences and all of that, the joy of it all. I have a fantastic book, no relation to the lovely Julia, uh, Dorothy Hartley, Food in England. This is a fantastic compendium of the types of food that was cooked throughout history. Um, and in particular, sort of at, at uh, I suppose in the 1900, in the 20th century, for, you know, before we sort of modernized and we went all international and, and globalist and, and all of that, these are foods that represent this country. A lot of people think, oh, we don't have much in the way of food in this country. I think that's rubbish. I think that's complete nonsense. So there's forms of mutton and the things you can do with it. I think we can explore a lot of that. I want to put back uh, the English soul uh, and the <clears throat> the English sense of cooking. And look at this here, another thing. Um, I'm trying to do this all on my phone, but obviously we'll do this a lot more professionally when we put it into the show. But the, oh, the, the cows and the cattle and things like that, I can't really show it very well. Can't open the book big enough. I need a bigger book. But there's lots of things in the kitchen, in the kitchen world that we can show. Implements, those old wonderful things. But my thanks to, um, I can't remember if it was it Jane Cox who sent me this um, wonderful, I think it was Jane. And if, I found, if I've got the wrong person, I do apologise. All these old fashioned implements. I'd love to look at... Uh, the old English way of cooking things, the implements and all of that. I mean, not going right back to a cauldron over an open fire. I'm not talking about that, thank you. 
but I am talking about, you know, cooking on an open, uh, an essay and things like that. The things that people would do in the evenings, a little bit of history um, and all that kind of malarkey. So sorry if you've uh, accidentally, inadvertently seen um, my pants hanging on the line. We don't want any of that in the show as much as we can help it, but you never know. Washing and somewhere in my back room, I also have a mangle. So uh, I may do some washing in the old fashioned way with a washboard and a mangle and see how that compares to the more modern washing machine. So food is definitely something we'll be we'll be looking at. Um, and my kitchen, I think, you know, I spent a lot of time building that kitchen and making it uh, an, an interesting and slightly different from the modern kitchen because of my interest in in looking back. And and I love I love being in it. It's just a fantastic and, and the essay, of course, it's so wonderful to sit there of an evening and read a few books. Ah, talking of books, I have a pile of books here. Um, and I want to look at books and bring to you ideas or suggestions for reading books. And, and of course, very much interested in your ideas and concepts and ideas for books uh, about England and Englishness and that sort of thing. I've just recently read this Jeremy Paxson book about the English, who in essence sort of says that uh, the notion of England and Englishness is an idea rather than a reality. Now, I don't know that I 100% agree with all of that, but there is a certain sense that uh, there is a, it's almost, it's almost a myth, it's almost a legend, and the way things are going, it will soon just be that legend that once there was this wonderful place called England, where people were English and not uh, um, all sorts of different nationalities, and they, they all spoke the same language, and they all had the same shared customs and traditions, which I don't think is a bad thing, personally. But um, other things, I mean, I've been reading a book, series of books by Fred Archer. It's a sort of country ways down there in, um, in the West Country. Uh, an Evesham lad, a distant scene, a country book. Um, he's very good at, uh, at uh, bringing from the 1930s, before modernisation, as the, the time when horses were still ploughing the fields and villages were a, an actual cohesive unit. The squire may have uh, ran the place, as it were, and the vicar or the priest, whomever. Uh, and, and then there was all the, the, the people who supported um, all of that, the, 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 the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker and all of that. Um, another interesting author is George Ewart Evans, writing again, similar sort of time um, as the beginnings of modernisation comes in, the tractors coming in, and how these old people with skills uh, have been dying out, and that instead of having skilled people who know how to do things with their hands, on the whole, and I know this is a sweeping statement, we have a lot of people who are machine operators, and um, there was a time when the machines were there that came in and they aided those craftsmen to make the back-breaking jobs less back-breaking. But now it's like the machines have taken over and, and actually people no longer really have the same connection with the land. Another author I thoroughly recommend is Humphrey Phelps and uh, his charming stories of just around the corner, just over yonder, just where we belong, and another one that I've got are absolutely brilliant to read and and I want to uh, it within within the, the the tea time show whatever it's called uh, bring in some of that uh, as well so that would be um, hopefully something to look forward to um, in all of that and of course we want your communication um, people can send in their emails and we'll um, talk backwards and forwards it would be great to do a, a live show at some point as well so uh, let's let's just have a look because um, Every now and again, I do get the odd email in, and uh, it would be great just to read them out. So here's one that came in. It says, uh, Hi, Richard. What an uppity little man you are. Those shelf stackers in dead-end jobs are earning far more than you will ever on YouTube and are able to support themselves and their families, unlike you, lazy little fella. Get some self-respect. And this person goes on. Uh, let's hope if you do eventually move in with Julia, you get off your bottom and go and and support them financially. Hopefully you do something with that cold, damp home of yours before you bring the little ones in there. 
Imagine going from a navy man to a man child, silly Julia. And this person signs, Love Millie. Ah, oh, bless. Thank you so much, Millie. That's very much appreciated. That wonderful, kind, and generous sentiment that you have there. Let's hope that uh, we equally have some wonderful and kind hearted, appreciative emails that we can read out on the show. Um, as I say, also, we um, hope to have uh, live shows here as well uh, so that we can interact at the same time. Not like the Vogue show would be sort of, um, was all, well, two or three times a week. These might be perhaps once a month we'll do a live show with the lovely Julia and we can discuss all the things that have been coming up in the shows, which would be fantastic. And, of course, uh, interviews and telephone conversations would be fantastic. Here I've got my lovely vintage telephone. Uh, it's actually a mock vintage telephone, it's not a genuine vintage, it's actually plastic. But uh, we uh, love to do interviews with people um, and then bring them into the show, people who have something to say, people who run farms and uh, potteries and industries, craftspeople, people who are doing English-style things from the old days would be wonderful. We've yet to work out some theme music. Maybe you're a composer and would uh, fancy giving it a go and producing some original theme, theme music for the show, which would be great, and indeed graphics. So still lots to work out here. Uh, a title, a name for this Tea Time show um, that, that sums up Englishness. Uh, maybe tea time is the thing, I don't know. Um, music we need and some graphics just to top and tail it rather than it just starting abruptly and ending abruptly. But unfortunately, that's how it's going to end today. So I hope you've enjoyed this little teaser of what it might be. There's a lot of work in progress. Um, I'm not quite sure when we'll start. It may just ease in and we'll just do some and you'll just have to bear with me. It, uh, it's not going to be a fully fledged, complete show right at the, the beginning. It will be embryonic, as I say. But thanks for watching this time and I'll catch up with you very soon. Bye bye. <laughs>